Sometimes a light surprises. The MHB 527 Bibliography Sometimes a light surprises is a hymn written by William Cowper. William Cowper is a famous poet and hymn writer who changed the direction of the 18th century nature poetry by writing of everyday life and scenes of the English countryside. He was born on 27th November 1731 at Beckhamstead, Hertfordshire, England and died on 25th April 1800. After being institutionalized for insanity in the period of 1763 to 65, Cowper found refuge in a fervent evangelical Christianity, the inspiration behind his much-loved hymns. His religious sentiment and association with John Newton, who wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear, led to much of the poetry for which he is best remembered and to the series of the only hymns. William Cowper also wrote a number of anti-slavery hymns and his friendship with Newton, who was an avid anti-slavery campaigner, resulted in Cowper being asked to write in support of the abolitionist campaign. Some of the famous hymns of Cowper include There is a fountain filled with blood, MHB 201, Hack my soul, it is the Lord, MHB 432, etc. Background For the entirety of Cowper's adult life, he was plagued by persistent, devastating, at times suicidal depression and insanity. People go through a whole lot more sufferings in life, loss of home, unemployment, loss of loved ones, accidents rendering people incapacitated in one way or the other, diseases, poverty, etc. There are days when one can't just do anything in life but to cope. Anyone who will be honest to confess the reality of life knows that this life is full of dark moments. The kind of moments when God seems absent, when you question everything you've ever believed and wonder whether the universe has gone slightly off kilter. In those times, it really can seem like God is hiding from us. In our ever so safe subculture, we hesitate to acknowledge these dark times unless we should somehow minimize the truth of what we say we believe. So instead of honestly confessing the pain, we create happy cliches and condolences to assure ourselves and one another that everything is right in the world. But it is not. This world is a world awaiting redemption, a world groaning with unexplained injustices and epidemic and pandemic pain. It is a very broken creation. And more often than we will care to admit that brokenness can even invade our own souls. What we need to understand is that acknowledging the darkness actually makes the light all the more brilliant. In all this chaos and destruction, we cling to the light of Christ in faith. Faith that this present darkness while reality is not the ultimate reality. Faith that as we struggle forward, he struggles alongside us. Faith that one day by His grace we will reach our better permanent home. However, in our faith we cannot always see. And this is why the light surprises. This is because often the shadows of this life can become so dark that we tend to lose faith. So when God, even for a brief moment, chooses to step out of the shadows and pull back heaven's curtain, to let a glimpse of glory shine into our dark existence, we blink our eyes and strain at it. It is like someone suddenly turning on the light while we are fumbling around in a dark room. It is completely welcome, but completely unexpected, and perhaps even for a moment unsettling. Kalpa therefore wants to communicate an assurance to us. He admonishes us with this him to hold on in our faith for a light will soon surprise us. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. and
Luther begins the hymn that sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. In Psalm 36 verse 9, we read that for with you is the fountain of life, in your light we see light. We realize there are two different lights being talked about in the verse. Psalm 119 verse 105 also says that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is form as the first light we see in the first scripture refers to the word of God. Hence we cannot read it as in your word we see light. This also means light is the same as the word of God. A study of the first chapter of the gospel according to John makes us understand that the word of God is Jesus Christ. Saints used in the first statement metaphorically refers to the service of a Christian. Hence, the first statement can be rephrased as sometimes Jesus surprises a Christian while he serves. The world today presents with endless tribulations, sufferings, pain, etc. But people sometimes want to let go of the service in God's vineyard. People are sometimes known for their active participation and service to God. But their faith is being tested when the difficult time starts coming. Kappa wants to use this hymn to retreat Malachi 4.2. But you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. That the battle isn't over. Though sorrow cometh at night, but joy cometh in the morning. When all comforts are declining, when all hope is being lost, when our faith starts to waver, this Jesus who loves us so much will grant us a season of clear shining after the rain. Note that he says a season. The joyous times isn't going to be just a day or a short time, but an eternal joy that will overwhelm us. Hence we walk with the assurance that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8 verse 18 in holy contemplation, we sweet and pursue the theme of God's Contemplation, according to the English dictionary, is the act of the mind in considering with attention a continued attention of the mind to a particular subject. It can also be referred to as meditation. Kappa begins the second stanza with a plea to meditate or put our minds through a continuous process of fixed attention on the theme of God's salvation. Let's briefly consider the theme of God's salvation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God made heaven his abode or dwelling place. As a king, he extended his kingdom to earth and put man in charge. However, to ensure that man would rule and dominate the earth as God wanted, he gave man his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to serve as the bridge between humanity and divinity. Unfortunately, man sinned and lost this connection. Hence, Man was in bondage and couldn't dominate as he had originally been made. The gap between man and God had also widened such that man was in no way getting closer back to his maker. But because of the king's amazing love for man, he sent his only begotten son to restore the dominion bandit and bring man back closer to the king. But this restoration cannot happen without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9 verse 22 so the son had to go through tribulations, sufferings, insults, pain, and finally die by shedding his blood for the remission of man's sins. 
he who knew no sin had to become sin for us. Such an amazing love. However, the Son defeated death and rose again to restore this connection back to man. I call the theme of salvation love. As we have various scriptures teaching us about the love of God, John chapter 3 verse 16, 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, 1 John chapter 4 verse 19, etc. Taking some cues from the explanation of the theme, we realize that even the begotten suffered, so it's actually a privilege for us to share in his sufferings. The apostles had the opportunity to share in the sufferings of Christ. We as Latter day followers should also see it as an opportunity to suffer for Christ. Christ now is seated at the right hand of God, crowned with much glory. This informs us we also have our crowns of glory awaiting us only if we hold on to our faith and keep to the service. Kappa wants us to pursue this theme of salvation. We shouldn't just have the knowledge of it, but we should live it. It should be daily renewed in our minds and hearts that God still loves us. Even when we were sinners, He loved us. Then what of now that we have much grace abounding? Now that His Spirit resides in us, this will renew our minds and we can set present sorrow aside and cheerfully say that even let the unknown tomorrow come with what it may, we have Christ in the vessel, so we will smile at the storm. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, so we will say that if the Lord was, we shall live. James chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. But he will surely bear us through. We won't worry about what we will wear, for he who gives the lilies clothing will clothe his people. Jesus said in Matthew 6 28 to 30 that we shouldn't worry about clothing, for if King Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like the lilies of the field, who neither toil nor spin, how much more won't he clothe his people with nicer arrays? Kappa retreats again the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 26. And we should also worry about what we will eat or we will drink. For no creature is but fed beneath the heavens. He who feeds the ravens will surely give bread to his children. He fed the Israelites with manna all the time through the wilderness. Never doubt him for he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Ephesians 3, verse 20. uses the last stanza of the hymn to finally admonish us that no matter the severity of what we are going through, God is still with us. So the prophet Habakkuk says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, 
and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no head in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. Perhaps the school fees are not ready. Hostel money isn't ready. Perhaps there isn't money to even afford a square meal. A loved one is sick and there isn't any hope of recovery. Kappa wants us to still have joy in the God of our salvation. The joy of the Lord should be our strength daily as we move in life. There is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is a temporal excitement, but joy is a permanent feeling which rings deep down in our souls. We ought to daily rejoice no matter the current condition. He is the same God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is the God we adore. His love is as great as his power. He is the same great God who has none greater than him. He abides forever and never changes. We ought to sing his praise to tune our voices. This means his service must be a constant thing that we use to sharpen our faith. For while we confide in him, we will always be rejoicing. Conclusion William Cowper, a regular patient at a mental hospital, could look outside his current condition and communicate the love of God to us. We also can go an extra mile by living it and sharing it with others. We want to admonish ourselves with Lamentations 3 verse 19, 24. Remember my affliction and grooming, the wormwood and the girl. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, souls, my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom.